Penna from 6.5. In this video, I'm going to show you how to attach files in Gmail in a way that uh, allows you to keep control of your IP, your intellectual property, keep control over who can see that file uh, when and where they can see it, and also make it easier so that you don't have to download a file and then re-upload it and actually end up using up more space in your account than you probably need to. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to use uh, a video file here that I want to send to someone else. And what I've done is I've uploaded that video file into my Google Drive. Now, as you can see over on the right hand side here, no, it doesn't show me yet. Uh, this is about a 17 megabyte file. Okay. Now I could uh, keep that in my Google Drive, which is grand. And then I could also come along into Gmail and I can drag and drop and upload that same file as an attachment on my email. Now, the problem with doing that is, first of all, I then don't know who has, who has access to it. The recipient could forward that on to anyone they want to. Um, but the second problem is uh, I've now created a duplicate of that file. Now, uh, I end up saving or using up twice the amount of space in my Google account for that particular file. So let's let's break that down for a second. So first of all, I've got it in Google Drive, that's 17 megabytes. Now I'm gonna attach it to my email and that's another 17 megabytes. So this has cost me 34 megabytes worth of space. And that's obviously really important when you've only got 30 gig, for example, on a free Gmail account. Um, but maybe if you're using Google Workspace uh, Starter, you get 30 gigabytes per user. So even in a business sense, when you're using that over and over again, eventually you're going to get to a point where you've used twice the amount of space to send one particular file. So this is not the recommended way of doing it. So I'm just going to close that out. And then what you'll see I'm going to do is just click on the uh, Google Drive icon down here, insert with drive. And that's going to find my, uh, open up my Google Drive. And then here is the video that I want to insert. And you can see in the bottom right here, it says insert as a drive link. Now, what this is gonna do is allow me to uh, pop a link into that email. And when the user receives it, they'll click on that link, it'll open their browser using that link and show them that file inside of Google Drive. Now, obviously, if that user is a Google, uh, has a Google account, there's no issue there. But what's also gonna happen here is when I click send, it's gonna ask me to define the permissions for that user and say, well, what can they do with it? So if I say don't give access, well, <laughs> there's not much point in sending this file to them if I don't give them any access. If I say anyone with the link to view, this means that uh, the recipient can forward that email on and essentially anyone after that recipient can then click on the link and they can still view it. So there are certain use cases where that's okay. Um, by and large, you want to use share it with the people that I've got in the in the list. So I'm going to uh, just leave the recipient there and then I can tell the system, I can tell Google Drive, the permissions for that are going to be their reviewer. They can comment on it or they can actually edit it. OK, now, obviously, in order to do this, they've got to have a Google account. If you're sending it to someone who say on a competitor platform that doesn't use Google, see our other video about how to enable any email address with Google superpowers. Uh, and you can treat Google just like any other service that you sign up for on the internet. You do not need a Gmail account. You do not need Google Workspace. You can take a Microsoft email address, for example, and give it the ability to log into Google, use Google Drive, and so on and so forth. So I can set the permissions on that particular file in here. So I'll leave it as viewer, and then I click on send, and it will say, if I'm because I'm using Google Workspace, I just want to get a warning that says I'm going to send it externally and I click on send and off it goes. Now, all that's happened there is I haven't created a copy of it inside of my Gmail. It only exists in Google Drive. So therefore, it's a really space uh, efficient way of sending emails. And you'll also notice I didn't need to download it to my computer from Google Drive and then wait for it to upload. You know, that's a, a bad thing if you're on mobile or if you are on a slow internet connection. This is really quick because you're actually not moving files around at all of any particular size. Now, now the final benefit to this is that Gmail has a, a limit of about 20 or 25 megabytes for an email. So if you have lots of things that you want to send, uh, you can bundle them together in one folder and you can send them all as links inside of the email. And then you can send gigabytes and gigabytes worth of data if you want to to someone else. 
and obviously they can then add it to their drive on the other end they don't have to download it or if they uh, don't use Google Drive and they are going to download it well that's uh, that's what's going to happen on the other end so thanks very much for watching uh, I'm Duncan from 6.5 if you found this video useful please don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video